Stevenson's rocket was an early steam locomotive of O2 two-wheel arrangement. It was built for, and won, the Rainhill trials held by the Liverpool and Manchester Railway in 1829 to choose the best design to power the railway. Rocket was designed by Robert Stevenson in 1829, and built at the 4th Street works of his company in Newcastle upon Tyne. Though Rocket was not the first steam locomotive, it was the first to bring together several innovations to produce the most advanced locomotive of its day. It is the most famous example of an evolving design of locomotives by Stevenson that became the template for most steam engines in the following 150 years. The locomotive was preserved and displayed in the Science Museum in London until 2018. It was loaned to Newcastle Discovery Museum between the 22nd of June and the 9th of September 2018, to the Science and Industry Museum in Manchester from the 25th of September 2018 to the 8th of September 2019, and will move to the National Railway Museum in York later in 2019. Topic: Design. Topic. Basic layout The locomotive had a tall smokestack chimney at the front, a cylindrical boiler in the middle, and a separate firebox at the rear. The large front pair of wooden wheels was driven by two external cylinders set at an angle. The smaller rear wheels were not coupled to the driving wheels, giving an O two-wheel arrangement. Topic. Design objectives Stevenson designed rocket for the Rainhill trials, and the specific rules of that contest. As the first railway intended for passengers more than freight, the rules emphasized speed and would require reliability, but the weight of the locomotive was also tightly restricted. Six-wheeled locomotives were limited to six tons, four-wheeled locomotives to four and a half tons. In particular, the weight of the train expected to be hauled was to be no more than three times the actual weight of the locomotive. Stevenson realized that whatever the size of previously successful locomotives, this new contest would favor a fast, light locomotive of only moderate hauling power. Innovations Topic: Single pair of driving wheels Stevenson's most visible decision was to use a single pair of driving wheels, with a small carrying axle behind. This was the first O2 and first single driver locomotive. The use of single drivers gave several advantages. The weight of coupling rods was avoided and the second axle could be smaller and lightweight, as it only carried a small proportion of the weight. Rocket placed just over two and a half tons of its four and a half ton total weight onto its driving wheels, a higher axle load than Sans Paray, even though the O O was heavier overall at five ton, and officially disqualified by being over the four and a half ton limit. Early locomotive designers had been concerned that the adhesion of a locomotive's driving wheels would be inadequate, but Stevenson's past experience convinced him that this would not be a problem, particularly with the light trains of the trials contest. <laughs> Multiple boiler fire tubes Rocket uses a multi-tubular boiler design. Previous locomotive boilers consisted of a single pipe surrounded by water though the Lancashire Witch did have twin flues. Rocket had 25 copper fire tubes that carry the hot exhaust gas from the firebox, through the wet boiler to the blast pipe and chimney. This arrangement resulted in a greatly increased surface contact area of hot pipe with boiler water when compared to a single large flue. 
Additionally, radiant heating from the enlarged separate firebox helped deliver a further increase in steaming and hence boiler efficiency. The original innovator of multiple fire tubes is unclear, between Stevenson and Mark Seguin. It is known that Seguin visited Stevenson to observe locomotion and that he also built two multi-tubular locomotives of his own design for the St. Etienne Lyon Railway before Rocket. Rocket's boiler was of the more highly developed form, with the separate firebox and a blast pipe for draft, rather than Seguin's cumbersome fans, but Rocket was not the first multi-tubular boiler, although it remains unclear just whose invention it was. The benefits of increasing the fire tube area had also been attempted with Ericsson and Braithwaite's novelty at Rainhill. Their design though used a single fire tube, folded in three. This offered an increased surface area, but only at the cost of a proportionately increased length and so poor draft on the fire. Its arrangement also made tube cleaning impractical. The advantages of the multiple tube boiler were quickly recognized, even for heavy, slow freight locomotives. By 1830, Stevenson's past employee Timothy Hackworth had redesigned his return fluid Royal George as the return tubed Wilberforce class. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Blast pipe. Rocket also used a blast pipe, feeding the exhaust steam from the cylinders into the base of the chimney so as to induce a partial vacuum and pull air through the fire. Credit for the invention of the blast pipe is disputed, though Stevenson used it as early as 1814. The blast pipe worked well on the multi-tube boiler of Rocket but on earlier designs with a single flue through the boiler it had created so much suction that it tended to rip the top off the fire and throw burning cinders out of the chimney, vastly increasing the fuel consumption. Cylinders closer to the horizontal Like the Lancashire Witch, Rocket had two cylinders set at angle from the horizontal, with the pistons driving a pair of 4 feet 8.5 in meters diameter wheels. Most previous designs had the cylinders positioned vertically, which gave the engines an uneven swaying motion as they progressed along the track. Subsequently, Rocket was modified so that the cylinders were set close to horizontal, a layout that influenced nearly all designs that followed. <laughs> Pistons directly connected to driving wheels Again like the Lancashire Witch, the pistons were connected directly to the driving wheels, an arrangement which is found in subsequent steam locomotives. Separate firebox The firebox was separate from the boiler and was double-walled, with a water jacket between them. Stevenson recognized that the hottest part of the boiler, and thus the most effective for evaporating water, was that surrounding the fire itself. This firebox was heated by radiant heat from the glowing coke, not just convection from the hot exhaust gas. Locomotives of Rocket's era were fired by coke rather than coal. Local landowners were already familiar with the dark clouds of smoke from coal-fired stationary engines and had imposed regulations on most new railways that locomotives would consume their own smoke. The smoke from a burning coke fire was much cleaner than that from coal. It was not until 30 years later and the development of the long firebox and brick arch that locomotives would be effectively able to burn coal directly. Rocket's first firebox was of copper sheet and of a somewhat triangular shape from the side. The throat plate was a firebrick, possibly the backhead too. When rebuilt around 1831, this was replaced by a wrought iron backhead and throat plate, with a drum wrapper now missing, presumed to be of copper, between them. This gave a larger internal volume and encouraged better combustion within the firebox, rather than inside the tubes. 
These early fireboxes formed a separate water space from the boiler drum and were connected by prominent external copper pipes. Topic: <laughs> Credit for the design. There have been differences in opinion on who should be given the credit for designing Rocket. George Stevenson had designed several locomotives before but none as advanced as Rocket. At the time that Rocket was being designed and built at the Fourth Banks Works, he was living in Liverpool overseeing the building of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. His son Robert had recently returned from a stint working in South America and resumed as managing director of Robert Stevenson & Company. He was in daily charge of designing and constructing the new locomotive. Although he was in frequent contact with his father in Liverpool and probably received advice from him, it is difficult not to give the majority of the credit for the design to Robert. A third person who may deserve a significant amount of credit is Henry Booth, the treasurer of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. He is believed to have suggested to Robert Stevenson that a multi-tube boiler should be used. <laughs> Evolution of the Stevenson locomotive design Before Rocket Rocket was built at a time of rapid development of steam engine technology. It was based on experience gained from earlier designs by George and Robert Stevenson, including the Killingworth locomotive Blücher 1814, Locomotion 1825, and the Lancashire Witch 1828. Topic rocket type locomotives Rocket was followed by a number of other engines of similar O2 layout with rear mounted cylinders built for the L&MR before it opened on the 15th of September 1830 culminating in the Northumbrian 1830 by which time the cylinders were horizontal other engines of the rocket design which were delivered to the Liverpool and Manchester Railway included Arrow, Comet, Dart and Meteor all being delivered to the railway during 1830. <laughs> After rocket At around the same time, Stevenson experimented with front-mounted cylinders. The unsuccessful O-4 O Invicta, built in 1829 immediately after Rocket, still had them at an angle. The successful 2-2 O locomotive Planet 1830 had internal front-mounted cylinders set to the horizontal. Engines built to the Planet design and the subsequent 2-2 patentee design of 1833 made the design of Rocket obsolete. Topic. Operation and subsequent history Topic Opening day accident The opening ceremony of the L&MR, on 15 September 1830, was a considerable event, drawing luminaries from the government and industry, including the Prime Minister, the Duke of Wellington. The day started with a procession of eight trains setting out from Liverpool for Manchester. The parade was led by Northumbrian driven by George Stevenson, and included Phoenix driven by his son Robert, North Star driven by his brother Robert Sr. and Rocket driven by assistant engineer Joseph Locke. The day was marred by the death of William Huskisson, the Member of Parliament for Liverpool, who was struck and killed by Rocket at Parkside. Topic service history between 1830 and 1840 is only vaguely documented. From 1830 to 1834, Rocket served on the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. After service on the L&MR, Rocket was used between 1836 and 1840 on Lord Carlisle's railway near Brampton, in Cumberland now Cumbria, England. Modifications 
Built as a prototype to win a speed trial, the engine was soon superseded by improved designs, such as Stevenson's Northumbrian and Planet designs, both of 1830. Within a few years, the rocket itself had been much modified to be similar to the Northumbrian class. The cylinders were altered to a near horizontal position, compared to the angled arrangement as new, the firebox capacity was enlarged and the shape simplified, and the locomotive was given a drum smokebox. These arrangements can be seen in the engine today. Such are the changes in the engine from 1829 that the Engineer magazine, circa 1884, concluded that, "...it seems to us indisputable that the rocket of 1829 and 1830 were totally different engines." <laughs> Lord Dundonald's rotary engine In 1834, the engine was selected for further unsuccessful modifications to test a newly developed rotary steam engine designed by Admiral the 10th Earl of Dundonald. At a cost of nearly 80 pounds, rocket cylinders and driving rods were removed and two of the engines were installed directly on its driving axle with a feedwater pump in between. On the 22nd of October, of that year, an operational trial was held with disappointing results, one witness observing, that, "...the engine could not be made to draw a train of empty carriages." Due to inherent design flaws and engineering difficulties associated with their design, Lord Dundonald's engines were simply too feeble for the task. Lord Carlisle's Railway In 1836, Rocket was sold for £300 and began service on the Brampton Railway, a mineral railway in Cumberland that had recently converted to Stevenson Gage. It remained here at Tyndale, after service, until 1862 and its donation to the London Museum. Topic. Preservation In 1862 Rocket was donated to the Patent Office Museum in London now the Science Museum by the Thompsons of Milton Hall, near Brampton. It was meant to take part in the Great British Empire Exhibition of 1851 at Crystal Palace but this never happened because the preparation of the locomotive for the event took too long. The locomotive still exists. It was displayed at the Science Museum for 150 years, although in a form much modified from its state at the Rainhill Trials. In 2018 it was displayed in Newcastle and following this there were plans to display it in Manchester for seven months, then at the National Railway Museum, York from an unknown date in 2019. Topic replicas In 1923, Buster Keaton had a functioning replica built for the film, Our Hospitality. Two years later, the replica was used again in the Al St. John film, The Iron Mule, directed by Keaton's mentor, Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle. The subsequent whereabouts of the replica are unknown. There are, however, at least two other replicas of Rocket in the U.S., both built by Robert Stevenson and Hawthorne's in 1929. One is at the Henry Ford Museum in the Metro Detroit suburb of Dearborn, Michigan, the other at the Museum of Science and Industry, Chicago. The earliest full size replica of Rocket seems to have been one depicted on a London and North Western Railway postcard, therefore pre a cutaway static replica. See photo Photo above was built in 1935 and displayed for many years next to the original at London's Science Museum, and in 1979 a further, working replica rocket was built by Locomotion Enterprises in the Springwell workshops at the Bose Railway for the 150th anniversary celebrations. It has a shorter chimney than the original to clear the bridge at Rainhill, the trackbed is deeper than in the 19th century, giving less headroom. Both of these replicas are now based at the National Railway Museum, York
Topic in fiction In the Thomas and Friends television series, Stevenson's rocket is represented by Stephen, a friend of Sir Robert Norambi, Earl of Sodor. Stephen first appeared in the series Special King of the Railway. Though his design is based on the post rainhill modifications, Stephen has identified himself as the original rocket, describing the rainhill trials and his subsequent working years. The name Stephen is derived from the designer, Robert Stevenson. See also Novelty Invicta Lion Tom Thumb first American built steam locomotive John Bull Locomotion Rainhill Trials Sands Parade Stourbridge Lion first American operated steam locomotive